When preparing a concrete block wall for a premium mortar bed, the first step is to clean your substrate. First, start by scraping the wall to get rid of any stuck-on debris from the construction site. Next, sweep off the dust and wipe down the wall with a sponge and water. Now you have a clean, smooth surface and can start your premium mortar bed application. Mixing Laticrete Premium Mortar Bed Start with about 5.5 quarts of water in your bucket, then add about half the bag of mortar. Using a slow speed mixer, mix it up, add the second half, and mix again. Add small quantities of water until the final mix reaches a smooth, trowelable consistency. Let the mortar slake, or in other words, sit to react with the water, for five to seven minutes. After the slaking period is over, remix the mortar. It's important to remember to never add water after the slaking period is over. First, load the mortar onto your trowel and apply it to the wall. Skim it across the surface and really work it into your substrate. The goal here is to fill any voids in the wall. This should be a thin coat covering 100% of the wall. Applying a skim coat is optional, but it can be used to fill the raked joints and any small holes. It's done to achieve better coverage with the air and water barrier. If the concrete wall is relatively plumb with few imperfections, then the wall will not need to be leveled with anything. If a small amount of leveling or plumbing of the wall is required, then the Laticrete High Bond Masonry Veneer Mortar can be used to float and smooth the walls up to a maximum of 3 eighths of an inch thick. If the leveling or plumbing of the wall must be more than 3 eighths of an inch thick to accommodate out of plane repairs, then the Laticrete Premium Mortar Bed to float in smooth walls should be used. Try to keep your construction joints in the wall as clean as possible. It'll make things easier when you're treating the joint afterwards. When you've completed the skim coat and it is cured, use the flat edge of your trowel to smooth over the entire surface, removing any mortar peaks left behind. Use a drill to clear away any mortar that might have gotten into your construction joint. If you have any penetrations coming through the wall, you need to first fill the surrounding gap with backer rod. Then use the paintbrush to apply the flashing mortar, which will completely seal the opening. Once the flashing mortar has dried, it's time to apply the air and water barrier. Apply two coats, each 15 to 22 mils thick. When you reach a penetration, overlap the air and water barrier with the flashing mortar to reinforce the seal. You can check the thickness by using a film gauge. Drag it about an inch down the wall and check your reed. When you reach a construction joint, apply a layer of air and water barrier, then line the joint with the fabric strip and roll back over it with the air and water barrier. Try to roll out any air bubbles. Make sure you really get into the construction joint with the air and water barrier using a paintbrush. Continue on with the rest of the wall and wait for it to dry. You'll know a coat is dry when it is changed to more of an olive green color. When the first coat is dry, Apply the second coat using the same thickness. Once the second coat is dry, you can start to mix your polymer modified pre-bagged mortar from Laticrete. Mixing polymer modified pre-bagged mortar from Laticrete. Start with about 5.5 quarts of water in your bucket, then add about half the bag of mortar. Using a slow speed mixer, mix it up, add the second half, and mix again. Add small quantities of water until the final mix reaches a smooth, trowelable consistency. Once you're satisfied with the consistency, let the mortar slake for 5-7 to seven minutes. After the slaking period is over, remix the mortar. 
It's important to remember to never add water after the slicking period is over. Aris stack comes in three different face rises and in varied lengths. Corner units come packaged separately. All units should be cleaned of any dust or debris before application. Next, install your ledger board. A ledger board is a temporary support for the adhered veneer. Ledger boards can be created from several different products, such as metal or wood. The important characteristics for any ledger board is that it is straight and true, ensuring that it's not bowed or warped. The ledger board should be installed prior to the installation of the adhered veneer so that it creates a ledge for the units to sit on to provide support to the units until the high bond masonry veneer mortar has cured. It should be installed so that it is level and true. Once the high bond masonry veneer mortar has cured for a certain section and the adhered veneer is stable, the ledger board can be removed. Now you're ready to butter the wall and install the stone. Working in sections, use the flat edge of your trowel to butter the wall. Then, use the notch side of your trowel to create grooves in the wall. Once the wall is ready, back butter the units, filling all surface irregularities and ensuring 100% coverage. Aris stack should be installed starting from the corners and working your way towards the middle of the wall. When you set the stone, squish and slide the unit back and forth so the mortar peeks out the top. The excess mortar should be removed with your trowel. Continue up the wall, cutting units to size as needed. And again, ensure you achieve 100% coverage with the mortar on the backs of the units. Aris stack has dry joints, which means there's no need to leave spacing for a mortar joint. Ensure the unit is level after each set. Use spacers as needed to fix any uneven points. Aris stack is a three unit bond where the alpha stone or the largest stone makes up 15% of the wall, the middle sized unit makes up 55% and the smallest unit makes up the remaining 30% of the wall. The alpha stone should always be laid about a foot apart. There should be a minimum of four inches between vertical joints and the horizontal joints should be a maximum of four to five feet long. 